into some other things and we're running out of time right now we're going to be right back with that and with alex's special report on climate change stay tuned we'll be right back we're on the march the empire's on the run alex jones and the gcn radio network Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe, used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is concentrated into a two ounce bottle and is not recommended for extended continual use. This is not a low grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water for your preparedness storage or your home kitchen. Purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today and find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. Babies incinerated to heat UK hospitals. Soylent Green, ladies and gentlemen, is made out of people. But now children are literally being passed through the furnace in order to fuel hospitals in the UK. They're being sacrificed on the altar of efficiency and prosperity. What is the secret of Soylent Green? The powdered flesh from dead babies. Some people believe they can cure disease. Because of its enormous popularity, Soylent Green is in short supply. Remember, Tuesday is Soylent Green Day. The supply of Soylent Green has been exhausted. You must evacuate the area. Today is Tuesday! The federal court ruled that the shareholders of PepsiCo, big Bilderberg Group company, are not allowed to know uh, what they're using the baby parts for in the flavoring, but we already know. So enjoy the flavor. We're going to get the real solution, which is going to be a combination of death panels and, and sales taxes. I'm consistently pro-death. I'm for assisted suicide. I'm for regular suicide. I'm for whatever gets the freeway moving. Is spending a million dollars on that last three months of life for that patient, would it be better not to lay off the, those 10 teachers and 
to make that trade-up in medical costs. But that's called the death panel, uh, and you're not supposed to have that discussion. They told me to, uh, to say that they were sorry, but that you had become unreliable. <laughs> is this the kind of society that you want to live in? Any kind of society that would do this to its children will do it to its senior citizens. It will do it to its dissidents. That kind of society will also eventually turn on its police, on its army, on its prison guards, on the quislings and the collaborators who make that possible. This is nothing but a suicide cult. The scoops are on their way. The scoops are on their way. I repeat, the scoops are on their way. You will find out why Soylent Green means life. You will find out why Soylent Green means death. We've got to stop them. What Come on. is the secret so of Soylent Listen. Green? Soylent Green is people! They'll be breeding us like cattle for food. You've got to tell them. That's right. You've got to tell them. And as we just saw there, when you remove the ethical constraints, what is the government capable of doing? What is society capable of doing? Well, there apparently are very little, if any, ethical constraints in our society. So let's take a look at the technical constraints and see what these people who are devoid of any ethics are doing to get around their technical constraints. I kept getting sidetracked in the previous uh, segment and trying to talk about this transhumanist future soldier that DARPA is trying to create. Let me avoid talking about the ethics for a moment and just lay out the raw data that is documented here in this article about what DARPA is trying to do. They've got a biochronicity program where they want to get a handle on the human metabolism and on aging. Yeah, that's the time and aging, that, that sort of thing. Resulting in an enhanced human combat performance and a freakishly resilient soldier, both in terms of resisting and recovering from physical injury and resistance to disease. They also want to seek out and create new life, according to this article, the Pentagon also wants to dabble in artificial life. That's right, creating chimeras, things that are mixtures of different creatures, even things that have never existed in any form, in any shape. Once refined, this biotechnology will allow for the creation of entirely new organisms while adding new capacities or quote-unquote features to existing ones, including humans. Imagine a soldier who never needs to sleep, who requires minimal sustenance, or who has cat-like infrared vision. A new study suggests that dogs and cats can see things that are invisible to humans, from psychedelic stripes on flowers to flashy patterned feathers. So why not give humans that kind of capability? Interestingly, this meshes well with DARPA's existing biodesign program, he points out, and they have a quote here. Why bother with mechanical robots when you can engineer fake human replicants to fight your battles? We haven't heard much about Pentagon's would-be synthetic soldiers, but the biodesign program got a bump from 11.4 to 19.3 million dollars in next year's budget. But of course, that's a small amount of money compared to the amount of money that they're spending on the brain program. And for those of you who might look at that and say, "Hey, that's cool. I would love to be able to see in the dark like a cat." Well, guess what? They're not going to put out a super soldier like Captain America. As we talked about when we talked about the movie with the InfoWars crew, the guy who was a scientist there was very concerned that they had the right kind of person, the right kind of moral foundation in that person before he gave him those kinds of powers. They're not looking for that. They're looking for just the opposite. As a matter of fact, if you happen to have moral foundations, that's not going to be a problem for DARPA because their key thing is to adjust and control your brain. So if they can give you physical capability, you can bet that they're going to do something to control your brain. If you accept that physical capability, you're going to be accepting that brain control as well. Now, I've been promising that Alex was going to give us a special report on climate change, and we've got that report. Here it is. Across the Northern Hemisphere in 2013 and early 2014, we have seen record low temperatures. Some of them the coldest temperatures 
ever recorded in the last 300 years since thermometers were invented. The Great Lakes entirely froze over. The Arctic and Antarctic in their respective winters saw record growth in the ice. But what does Al Gore and CNN and MSNBC and the UN and the BBC do? They show you weather satellites from the poles during the summers and show the ice shrinking as it's always done for thousands of years with the northern and southern passages that were even documented in the time of the Vikings. They lie to people and say that penguins cannot swim in the Antarctic and that in the Arctic polar bears are dying even though National Geographic has to admit polar bear numbers are up five-fold since the 1950s and are now invading areas not previously known to be in their range. But that doesn't matter. Obama said you could keep your doctor. Then he said he never said you could keep your doctor. If you've got health care already, then you can keep your plan if you are satisfied with it. If you like the plan you have, you can keep it. I intend to keep this promise. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. If you like your plan and your doctor, you can keep them. He said it wouldn't raise your premium, even though it did. So why not tell you that polar bears can't swim? Why not tell school kids they're all going to die if we don't pay Al Gore and the UN trillions of dollars in carbon taxes? Well, now because they're losing the debate, and it's been shown in the UN's own numbers that since the mid-90s, the Earth's temperature has actually dropped slightly, that there are natural cycles, they can't deal with those facts. So, all over. British and European news, but also here in the U.S., we've seen professors and others come out and call for the arrest of people that question anthropogenic or man-made global warming. And the latest is in the Times of London, with a straight face, one of the biggest papers in England, talks about ministers and the committee in Parliament calling for people to not be allowed, including members of government, to question the, quote, consensus that man-made global warming is not man-made. Well, there is no consensus. In fact, the facade of the consensus is collapsing. The consensus is forming that the only thing that's steady is change itself. If you want to see the article, the headline is Crackdown Ordered on Climate Change Skeptics. That sounds like something out of the old Soviet Union. Then we segue into Al Gore and his new move to produce a Inconvenient Truth Part 2 with new lies for old. Bottom line, we have an authoritarian movement on the so-called left that is seeking to not just tax every form of human activity and track it, but to also silence anyone that would dare challenge it. These people are not liberals. They are out of control authoritarians. But I wanted to reach out to some of the mainline supporters of this who really mean well. And I want to discuss some of the real environmental threats to this planet. Open air genetic engineering of plants for pharmacological crops where viruses and bacteria are mixed into the genetic code of mainline staple food crops that then infect the entire family of say corn or canola has been proven in major studies to cross the genetic line into animals and humans that eat it damaging our DNA. We know that toxic waste dumping is a serious problem. We know that overfishing in many areas is a serious issue. We know that the development of superbugs because of the overuse of antibiotics is threatening not just human life but much of animal life on this planet. But when you enter into the equation earth changes and giant asteroids a two mile across a uh, nickel uh, asteroid would be estimated to be the equivalent of thousands of Hiroshima's or Nagasaki's. And that's something that humans don't have control over. That's something that paying a tax to Al Gore will not fix. Then you enter volcanic and seismic activity. Huge earthquakes from Chile to off the coast of Japan in the last few weeks, as well as California, as the Pacific Rim heats up. But government scientists tell us, don't worry, in the geological record, big events like this only happen every few hundred thousand years, and we don't think we're due. 
they have no idea on the real geological line how often these events really happen. But what we know is many civilizations have been destroyed or damaged by them. We know the world is hit by huge earthquakes and tsunamis on a routine basis, causing tens of thousands to die every single year. But because these are threats that the government can't even pretend to control, they tell us it's no big deal, it's not an issue.